Hello and welcome to this bonus episode. And as the title suggests, with our esteemed guest, club legend, Francis Benali. Now he took some time out of his hectic schedule recently to chat to us between training and, and media duties about his next epic challenge. Now epic is certainly not used loosely here. He's about to take on seven Ironmans in seven days, aptly named Iron Fran. Now some housekeeping before we get going and present it to you. This episode is sponsored by One Football, the app that brings you all the news, stats and live scores all in one place. If you haven't already, do make sure you check it out. Download it to be notified and kept up to date. The link is in the description below. So anyway, join us uh, with Franny as he shares with us the motivation, the inspiration and some of the physical and mental challenges that he is about to embark. You're watching The Ugly Inside? Subscribe below. So I'd like to welcome to the show then, living legend, Southampton legend. Uh, actually taking time out of your hectic, super schedule, schedule at the moment, uh, Franny Benali. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Five Rivers. It's a pleasure. No, thanks for, for having me. And um, obviously we're going to be talking a bit about the challenge. So yeah, appreciate all your support with that as well. Mm, so Nick's alongside me as well. We'll make this episode available to download as an extra bonus podcast um, as well. So. I mean, obviously here to talk about the Iron Fran Challenge, the, I suppose, the third of a, the trilogy of uh, super endurance uh, challenges. Well, yeah, as you say, I you know, managed to complete two now up to this point. First one in 2014, the second in 2016. And I think my body and mind needed a, a, a few years break from it and, uh, and time to prepare as well for, for the third challenge. And as, as you know, the viewers may, may know and any of the supporters... Uh, that have been following it. I always wanted to raise a million pounds for the charity and um, I'm so grateful that we've managed to raise, I think close on 700,000 pounds to this point now, um, but it's still short of the, the million pounds. Mm. So hopefully this one more challenge will, you know, capture people's imaginations with what we're, I'm gonna be doing along with the family and the support mm. team again. Um, but hopefully that will reflect in donations that will not just make a stumble over the million pound figure hopefully we'll smash through that and that'd be a great thing to do for the charity yeah i'm sure you will absolutely smash at this time um you know the accumulation of all three challenges deserves that reward of a million pounds well i mean take us back to the very beginning 2013 when you're just contemplating the very first challenge why why the ultra endurance challenges i think there's two reasons one there's you know we've been touched by cancer as a family and wanting to raise money for a great cause um so that was a, that was a natural given in a way but uh i'd it, probably going even back even earlier, you know, post playing career, uh, you know, going to the gym or going out for a run just for the sake of keeping fit is, is okay to a degree. But, it, you know, I'd, in football, I'd always had that goal of working towards the next game or trying to be in, stay in the team or get into the team. So there's always a, a goal that you're working towards. So all of a sudden to have that taken away, other than doing your fitness work just for the sake of, you know, keeping healthy was... Um, was, was quite a, a struggle in some ways. So I thought, well, if I have something to work towards that help, give me a focus. Mm. And I started becoming intrigued by the, the ultra endurance stuff that was going around Eddie is uh, doing his, his marathon runs and stuff. And I thought, yeah, I'd really like to, to test myself in a, an ultra endurance event, push the boundaries beyond anything I'd experienced as a player. Um, and, and that first challenge, running to every Premier League football stadium, when I came up with the concept, had no idea how far it was. Mm. Um, but ultimately, we, we made it a challenge by not just running to the stadiums, but running up to 50 miles a day every day for three weeks. So that that certainly tested my uh, my my sort of uh, endurance and, and and mental capacity. And it, you know, obviously, the, the first challenge you ran to every Premier League ground. You trumped it by running and cycling to every Premier League ground and Championship ground. And and this time, it's seven Ironmans in in seven days. I mean, ex excuse our ignorance, but. Tell, I suppose, spell it out, what is an Ironman and why Why seven days? I mean, an Ironman alone is crazy. Yeah, I, I think we, everyone says Ironman. I mean, it's, it's a brand in itself, the Ironman um, triathlons, but it's an, an ultra endurance triathlon. And it's, it's made up of a, a 2.4 mile swim, 112 miles on the bike, followed by a standard 26.2 marathon. So yeah, I think as a one-off event, it's a, it's a, it's a huge thing to, to achieve sort of physically and mentally, but um, Again, on, on the back of the last challenge, I wanted to think, well, how can I raise the bar beyond anything that I've experienced personally? But, 
you know, maybe, um, again, just capturing and engaging people thinking, well, you know, this is crazy uh, to be taken on. So, yeah, it's going to be seven of those in seven days. So wh where does it start and where does it finish? Well, we're not going to be going club to club like no. we have done on the previous challenges. I think just the length of the day means that if we were stopping at grounds mm. like we were on the previous challenges, that, that would have a, a huge impact on the time of day. I, I could be going physically between 16 and 18 hours a day, not allowing for any recovery or sleep. So... Um, you know, we're literally going point to point. Mm. So the start point for us on 29th of April is going to be in Manchester. Mm. I'll do a swim in a, a local pool there. Then it'll be straight on the bike, do the marathon. I think we work our way around to Nottingham, mm. then down to Leicester, across down to Bristol, across the M4 corridor, back towards London, then a little bit of a loop around London, um, Farnham order shop towards the end of the week, and then finishing back in Southampton, which the, the, the order will be a little bit different. It's going to be swim, bike, mm. run every day apart from the last day, which will be the swim in the morning. Then I'm going to take part in the, the Southampton Marathon and then I'm going to do finish on the bike. So it, the last day will be a little bit out of sync. I mean, how, how have you been coping as well with your hectic media sort of uh, duties alongside training? How have, you, how have you been squeezing it all? How, how, how has your body been coping as well? Well, I, th I think anyone that, that, that trains for even a half marathon or a marathon on its own, let alone trying to train for three disciplines, will will have experienced that 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 struggle of trying to juggle the training side along with everyday life i mean there's a there's a lot to fit in so training for three disciplines is difficult um you know the swimming was something that was completely out of my comfort zone <laughs> um you know the running and cycling i guess to a degree i was i was quite comfortable with or, or confident in that i could train up for um but yeah juggling three disciplines the training the hours the time that it especially now in the last sort of two to three weeks where I've been really cranking up the distance and the mileage. Um, it, it, it's tough. There's no getting around it. It's, no. it's, the challenge is going to be hard, but the, the months of preparation is difficult as well when I'm putting the time in from a training perspective, but that affects the family. You know, you're not with the family as much. There's still work to be done um, in and around the training. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult in many ways, but, um, you know, in, in the downside is the challenge is only a few weeks away now, but positive sense is that I'm trying to think well in three weeks or so it'll all be over <laughs> <laughs> in more ways than one yeah yeah, yeah. So, I mean, sorry Nick go on I was, I was just going to say I mean when you took the first two challenges up there were distinct sort of start and finish points on each day yeah. I, you're leaving Manchester and heading towards Nottingham is it, is it going to be the same you're going to swim in Manchester and then you're going to cycle in the general direction of Nottingham and then finish up by running and hopefully run into Nottingham type thing is that is that sort of worked out to the exact mile or are you now going to have to sort of finish at this point and then get a car to somewhere? Um, the logistics has been a huge thing and we've, we've been speaking off camera, you know, I'm not going to be doing open water swimming, which no. again, a couple of reasons logistically made sense not to do that. Um, a little bit of an, a safety element as well. Um, so I'm going to be doing all the swims in pools. So that helps, but ideally it doesn't work exactly like this, but the, the, the start point, uh, for me each day will be a pool somewhere then it'll be a point to point on the bike and then I'll be doing the marathon but ideally the finish point of my marathon is going to be the one the accommodation for that yeah. night two hopefully with a pool on site as close to the, yeah. the hotel as possible so even a, a five ten minute drive in the car could potentially have quite an impact on the day so we'd, we, we've looked at all these things logistically to try and plan the route so that wherever my finish point is, that is hopefully going to be the start point for the following morning. It's just funny enough, I just had a mental image there that it would have been nice for you to finish by swimming Southampton water. <laughs> uh, I've got, I had an image of like 10,000 people in Mayflower Park watching you dive off Hive Pier <laughs> and avoid the Isle of Wight ferry as you swum towards Mayflower <laughs> yeah. Park through a, a lot of... Uh, well, that's, industrial that's, waste yeah well it's, it's quite a romantic you know sort of notion to that in a way and it's great as that something like that would be it was uh yeah you know when i've seen guys like david williams doing his mm. thames swim and you know he's quite ill from that i believe so yeah, uh, you know sort of get you know with with all respect to our waters you know it's probably not the, the cleanest at times to be uh, no. going in swimming so yeah there's there's another added bonus to be doing the swims in the yeah. pools yeah no, no, that's fair enough there, there'll be obviously physical and, and mental challenges as well you know we've seen the pictures you sort of uh, and the recovery is going to be important as well it's going to be early starts late finishes and in dark times you had it in the last challenges what may, what motivates you to keep going a number of reasons i think there's that that 
wanting to reach the fundraising target. Um, as I said, you know, we've been touched by cancer. So there's a, there's a reason as a family why we wanted to, to take these kind of things on and the fundraising. Um, th th there's an element of seeing where my boundaries lie physically and mentally. Not, not that I want to get to a point that where I, I break myself or, or push my point to mm. push myself to a point where that will have potentially a long term damaging effect on me. And I, and I know that's a concern of the families. Uh, by doing this challenge, uh, each challenge seems to have ramped up in some shape or form. And I know it's a concern of theirs that you know my long term health is a mm. you know obviously their 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 best interest. And um, you know they want, they don't want me to do something, and I don't to be honest. You know I'd, I want to live a long life. I want to live, live an active and healthy life, but. At the same time, I don't want to push myself to a point where that affects it long term. So, um, you know, there's also since we started before the, the first challenge in 2014, you know, there's people close to the family and friends that have been uh, mm. diagnosed with this illness. Um, and again, you know, experiencing that and, and seeing what people are going through in their own struggles uh, drives me and my family on to to do what we're doing. That really sort of answers the next question I've got down. A, a question from one of our, our viewers from Instagram, Mike Smell, actually asked, what compelled you to do such an incredible challenge? But you answered it right there as well. I mean, this challenge, it's such an inspiring, you know, sort of journey. I mean, you've inspired so many, but what inspires you? I, I, I think the people that, uh, the, the charity side, the researchers, the scientists that are, are, are working towards hopefully finding a cure to this, it's it's my family. They've, they've inspired me, you know, in my life in so many different ways. Uh, so I want to to have a better life for for them, um, and 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 to I guess to be a a, a figure and um, a husband, a dad, um, a, a relative, a friend, you know, just mm. even a complete stranger. Maybe just being a, a a person who can can inspire somebody to think, well, you know, actually, what might seem impossible is possible. Uh, and you know, if I can achieve that, then um, and, and along the way, obviously raise some money for the, the, a, a wonderful cause. Then that's that's hopefully ticking a lot of boxes, and um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be delighted with that. And we've seen you, you know, obviously being backed by dozens of you know celebrities, athletes alike, media pundits, colleagues. I'm sure everybody sort of watching this, all the Southampton fans, will be right behind you as well. And. I suppose at the end of the day, the statistics is that one in two people are affected by cancer as well. And the target is one million. I suppose just to remind our, our listeners and viewers, how, how, how can we donate sort of quickly? Well, there's the, the all, obviously online social media stuff, but um, if anyone heads to ironfran.co.uk, there'll be all sorts on there about the challenge and how you can get involved and do maybe your own fundraising or make a donation. There's you know, the, the usual social media channels, Instagram and Twitter and everything like that. So, um, yeah, head to ironfran.co.uk and find all, mm. out all about it and, uh, yeah, and see how we get going. And that's what, that's what it's all about, really, because it, the inspiration, your life has been touched by cancer. Many people's lives have been touched by cancer. Sadly, there's not many people these days that don't have the misfortune to be blighted by that. Uh, you've given a lot of people pleasure over the years for Southampton Football Club and are truly one of the legends. At this moment in time, I'd like to have got Bob Geldof in to say a few <laughs> words, but our budget doesn't stress to that. So what I would like to say is 10 years ago or nine years ago, we took 50,000 people to Wembley to watch the team. If every one of those per people gave £6, then we'd hit the challenge. And six pounds, what, 50p a year for every year that you played for Southampton and actually mm -hmm. probably 30p a year for every year. I so can't I'll, do the sums, actually. I yeah. can't. <laughs> I do it on that end while I'm missing my finger. Uh, we can't do the sums, but what we can do the sums is we need to raise 300,000. Uh, and as a city, we've always been proud of our legends and we just now need to not sit back, watch the TV and say, hey, what a great guy Franny is for doing this. We need to physically help him get over the line. So every Saints fan, I appeal to you, just turn, go on to uh, just given to Fran.com or you get it right. Yeah. I'm getting too emotional here. I'm well enough. <laughs> just, just give it, just give free five or whatever you can afford and let's raise this million pound and help fight this terrible disease and let Franny have a holiday at the end of the Yeah, I don't, I don't want to be doing well, a fourth challenge, that's for, for that. sure. Yeah. Not least paying for that out of the money. Uh, but let's just do it, as they say. Uh, 
be proud of this football club. A quick way you can donate, you can donate £5 or £10 quickly by, and easily by texting FRAN, F-R-A-N 5 or F-R-A-N 10 to 70200. From all of us, from an ugly inside, Southampton fans alike, massive good luck, mate. Thank you very much, No, Great to join you and uh, loving the channel and keep up the good work, guys. And come on, you saints. Hi.